This is uh, Richard back at you. Today we've got a 98 uh, Chevy pickup that come in with a 4L60E in it. It's got the early design uh, input shaft and uh, the early converter. Uh, looks like this train's probably done back in 94 of 18, 97 of 18, something like that. Uh, now this is the tranny that the um, uh, ECM can lose the ground to raise pressure uh, in third gear. Now it didn't have any codes in it for anything crazy like that. The only code it had in it was a uh, PWM uh, solenoid circuit code. So we know the solenoids have got to be replaced and stuff like that. Uh, I'll look and see if there's fluid in the connector or anything like that to cause any type of shorts or anything like that because it did say short. So, but this tranny is pretty much cratered. Uh, I didn't test or anything like that. It did move in uh, back up and did move in onto the lift. But it's got a lot of stuff in the pan. So it does look like it's been rebuilt. So let's get it apart. No third and fourth. Well, Miss Teresa is at the camera today. We got Annie sitting here beside. She's making sure everything's going down okay. So it's just got a standard servo in it. We'll do some modifications because it is a four wheel drive and uh, it looks like he does get off into the river. We have a river around here so I have to uh, build my trannies for that. <laughs> Even if they say they don't go, we, we build them for that. So. Make sure you always get that socket down in there flat. Because if you don't, you see how hard that hit that bolt on it. It'll strip it out if you don't instantly. So it's got the thin bow housing, thin converter. Got the uh, early design input shaft, same as the early 700 4L60. Of course, we have a lockup O-ring that's shrunk down into the groove. It's soft, but it's shrunk down into the groove. So... We have no steel retainer. You notice that? There's no steel retainer on there at all. Uh, it will have one when it goes back on. So, we do have our Milwaukee 3 8 impact here. I figured out how to work it. Got the settings on high. I mean, this thing works really nice. Uh, we're going to use it a little bit. Uh, the modes that have in it's pretty crazy. It's got lo uh, low, second, and third, and then it's got a sensitivity mode. When you go to tighten it down, no more than it senses a, a load on the bolt, it turns off instantly. And I like that because then I can put my pan bolts on uh, without squishing the pan bolt or anything like that, and uh, without having to wear my speed handle out all the time. See, so look in here. This thing's pretty much trashed. I mean, a lot of clutch material, magnets covered up. I mean, this is, like I say, uh, we did take this apart uh, when we took it apart. Uh, it had no fluid in the transfer case either. About a half a coffee cup come out. Um, so we're going to call him back and see what he wants to do about the transfer case and see if he wants to inspect that. Now this does uh, look like it's got an aftermarket uh, PWM solenoid in it. So it probably went out and that's our code. Uh, no telling, this thing's got so much trash in it, probably plugged the solenoid up, burn, burn it up or something, who knows. But this thing works really nice. I haven't had a chance to submerge it in oil yet, but I've been trying. Everybody I hear tells me that uh, it'll work forever in oil. And see the sensitivity button just turns off, okay? Automatically. Triggers pulled, turned off. 
And I like that. So that's pretty cool. So. A little bit less of this on that old speed handle. Which I've got that down pat too. <laughs> Got that real early design pillow switch. We'll put a new design on it that's got a cover to keep all the metal from getting down in here and short circuiting that out. Uh, that's 90% of the time with codes on this, that's what that is, just trash in there uh, that shorts it out. Am uh, I missing a boat? Oh, shit, boat. Just stuck really good. Now, now remember that these guys go to the river. And anytime I see a gasket that's physically stuck on here like this is, it's had water. Because these gaskets here do not do that. Period. They come off pretty much every time, no matter how many miles is on them. So this will be a train wreck to clean up. A lot of scraping, stuff like that. We're looking here. It's got aluminum piston in here that I can tell. This thing's going to take some attention to get it back where it needs to be. Robber our socket off our Milwaukee. Let's give you a little air action. Air plate up there. So we had people say they like the air, they like the Milwaukee, so it's hard to say. We're just gonna swap them out a little bit. Now this tranny has built, well it's got a paint job on it. I can't tell if it's been built before. So, but you can see how the gasket's just stuck to everything. It'll just have to be really cleaned. Look for any scarring here. I always put a new piston with a long shank on every one that we do. And then here we got, there's our check balls all fell off. I was more anxious to see the gasket underneath, but uh, it's already been repaired. Once on the plate here, you can see it here. See that, Teresa? Yep. The others look really good, so. Now we would enlarge the feed hole to the clutch. A little bit larger than that there though, no matter what, especially being a four wheel drive. Of course, this gasket is gonna take a lot of attention to this case to get this off because it's just not gonna come off in pieces. Uh, this makes it a little harder to do, but yeah. Of course, we'll stack our pistons in the three, four accumulators. Like a, like a wine cork when you pulled it out earlier. Mm -hmm. See how this connector is full of fluid too. So we'll put a new harness on it, get this out of here. Um, like I said, it's just hard to say. It's probably been underwater, in water, under mud, a little bit of everything, so. Get our parking linkage off. I had a gentleman, uh, on my fan, Precision Fan uh, page on Facebook, uh, when he put it manual low, uh, he would hear a clicking noise and stuff like that. So anytime you, I've done it before, I've bent this rod right here, uh, putting it in a parts washer, clean it up on, on these trannies and on 350s. So, and what happens, it bends and when you put, you get it just a little bend, you put it in there, it'll push that lever over, just barely try to put it in park. And you hear that click and only a manual low move it up a second goes away but all you got to do is come in here try to figure out where you bend it just a little bit bend it back put the pan you know put it back together look at it uh under the car with the pan off and see if it's still doing it so it does happen there's a flywheel
see a lot of fluid around these bolts here. Uh, that's why I tell you, even though you change this O-ring right here, put a, a gasket on it, always put some silicone around there. Because if not, you take a big chance of that bolt leaking. I'm really curious to see how bad this thing is, being that the pan looked that bad, and it's got water, and it's got uh, river mud all over the truck. Not bad, but you can't hide river mud from an old boy that's been living here for 60 years next to the river, so, <laughs> and on a tranny shop for 40. So, stator looks good here. You do see a little bit of wear starting to get right here. Body's good. We'll press another stator in here. Body's, uh, stator body's really good. So, look in here. All this stuff will be replaced. We have a kit that we put in every one. Uh, old bushing's getting a little thin on one side. See how it's never touched there? Still have the, the, the slipperiness to the bushing right there, the Teflon, or wherever that coating is. And then you come over here, like that, but if you come here and look at one of our new bushings, see it's coated all the way around. See where this one here, you can see it's already lost its coating on one side and it's still there. So it's sitting in there like this, the crankshaft and the motor setting low, you know, starting to push down on here. I mean, multiple things, and get this, even though this been rebuilt, whoever put the line in this pump up and put it in there can cause this issue if they didn't have a pump alignment tool. Because if you get this off a couple thousand, it'll still work, but it'll move down. So, and wear that, so, you know, we won't know physically until we uh, put it back together, drive it for two or three thousand miles, pull it back apart and look at the bushing. But we did one here a while back uh, the gentleman puts over 100 miles a day back and forth to work. And uh, we did the tranny two years later, it come back leaking out of the front. And uh, that was the issue. You can see here the 2-4 band is just cooked. Just nothing left. Of course, we'll put our big old band in there. The old drum looks pretty, pretty sad. You know, yeah, it's pretty sad. It's probably bowed in the middle and stuff like that too. It, it, we'll have to put a new drum in it. But we'll look at the reverse clutch and see uh, how it's been used. So here we have the reverse clutch. Thin, really thin, but not burn up, you know what I mean? It's just, just thin. So that's one part of reverse. Let's go look at some stuff in here. So we knew the 3-4 clutch was going to be burned up out of this thing. And it's just totally cooked. There's nothing left. It's got the 6 clutch in it. It's got all of his load springs and stuff like that. Uh, but that's why when we get done with this unit and we put it back in, we're going to put a pressure gauge on this thing. And we're going to watch pressure rise in every gear. And we're going to make sure that this computer didn't lose the ground uh, circuit to raise the pressure on the 3-4 shift, or excuse me, on the 2-3 shift to apply this clutch, because this is the number one killer on this tranny. Uh, we've got a video out there, uh, Trent changing the wiring, or adding the wire to change the ground circuit on it, and repairing the uh, computer inside the car. So we'll be doing this one probably anyway, just for the fact. But here we go, here's another sign of water. Now if you look at this clutch right here, no lining. It just fell off. If you come over here, look at this clutch here, no lining. It fell off. Let me see if I can try to blow it off that thing here. I'm shocked this, that hasn't fell off too on that side. But that's what happens when water gets in these units, depending on how much water, how long period of a time, uh, the clutch plates will finally just fall off the steel. That's a big problem uh, with water. You can flush it, flush it, flush it, it doesn't matter. You, you can't never get all the water out of it. This is your forward clutch here. 
So we still haven't seen the reason for really a ton of metal except this baby right here, so far. Running around. We've only got so many days to work today, and uh, you seen on our last video, Trent's out there putting the rear end together. Uh, he's got that just about done. Mom is cracking the whips. Mom is cracking the whips. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, we did get our big wheel green pickup, uh, no reverse done. Okay. Hold on, I can't get that off there. I see it's good. This whole snap ring is a war or something. Plum out. It's not my part. Maybe the fly is too. Well. There it is. There it is. No biggie. The kit always comes with a new one anyway, so you just throw that thing away. But we do have our standard thrush washer support here, which we'll go back with a roller bearing style. Got a single four pinion planet. Looks still really good. Does got a hardened shell. We'll look for any wear on that thing and see if we can save the customer some money. Get out of here. Look at here for any type of wear on both sides of the gears. Looks really good. Now we're gonna get this built back today get this back in because we promised we'd have this truck back to the customer by Thanksgiving. Last thing I grab out of the case right there every time. Sometimes they're stuck up in the case but always want to look for that. Don't lose it, always put it back in. Look at your support. Look at your lower sprag assembly. It is the wide. If you ever have to replace it, always check this slip right here because they make two different sizes, two different thicknesses. Check this for this, any chatter marks, anything like that. Looks really good. We'll scotch bright that up. Here we have our low reverse clutch. I'm shocked the lining ain't fell off all on, on these two. So basically, um, I can't blame this tranny on being stuck. You know, it, it's got some wear, but here we have a three, four clutch failure. Look at your planet. Now this, this one here is loose. The planet has to be replaced. So, we will go back and uh, check the wire on that computer, put a gauge on it, go drive it, see what our pressures look like and stuff like that, uh, and get this uh, gentleman back on the road. But I want to show you something else here really quick while I explained. We tear these units down really fast, and uh, I go through telling, explaining how they work and stuff like that. So once I clean them up, I have to inspect them really, really good. So our last unit that we did that didn't have no reverse, the green pickup, so when I started checking things out here on this rear planet, I took it, you know, start and cleaned it up. I noticed we have teeth missing right here. So see, I didn't see that in the video. So that's why we go back, hand clean all this stuff and inspect it really well. Now you take this planet here too. This gear looks good. This gear looks good. This gear's got a teeth missing on it. See? So you gotta go back and look at all that stuff. Really, really close after you get them cleaned up. That's why everything's hand cleaned here and looked. If you don't, you can miss stuff so easy. 
um, and, and we don't want to miss anything. So if y'all need anything, give us Heart Precision Transmissions. Uh, we got more shows to come before Thanksgiving. So if y'all need anything, give us a holler. Y'all have a great day.